We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. I'm glad that we're, che- we're checking out Crack and Pinion because they're they really are doing doing some good stuff this season. Um, and so, like, I feel like the way that they they approach the challenge is always a very very um, a solid method. Um, I, I think I'll go into that a bit more after this uh, this match uh, goes uh, goes on. But um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, let's get started, and I think we're gonna pause right about three seconds into the match at uh, two minutes and twenty seven seconds left. Um, so yeah, pause right here. So we're going to, so with uh, three seconds into the match, looking at the blue lines, Kraken Pinion has already won, uh, has already dropped off. That's a, uh, in about two seconds, they dropped from the lander. Um, and they also took about one second to su- successfully sample. Uh, we can yeah, see four seconds here in the match. They've already sampled and dropped, which is pretty impressive. Uh, none of the other robots have dropped by now. Um, I will say drop time and autonomous doesn't really matter, but hang speed at the end of the uh, end of the game is super important. Um, my general rule, or uh, in watching a lot of matches, is if your team takes any uh, any more than ten seconds to get into position and latch onto the lander, you're doing yourself a little bit of a disservice because you're taking away from valuable time that could be used to collect and score minerals. Of course, it's important, and I'll get into this a little bit more later. It's super important that you can get that hang because that will decide. Um, that will be the uh, difference between winning a winning a finals match and losing a finals match. Uh, so we're going to see this come into play a little bit later uh, with latching at the end of this match and then the other matches. So let's uh, continue on. Um, so with uh, I think our next um, milestone that we're going to pause at is two minutes in the match. So I want to look at uh, cracking pinion. Just did a double sample, as we can kind of, as we can see, two minutes and thirteen seconds. Um, so, based off looking at the Orange Alliance, though, as I was talking with Shishir earlier, uh, their partner ten two ninety four the Edge seems to be able to do uh, a successful sample, uh, as well as park in the crater and drop their team marker. Uh, Tower, can you hear me? Uh, can we pause this match? And can we go back like twenty seconds? to uh, two minutes and 13. Um, so yeah, so right there we can see that uh, KP has successfully sampled. Um, we can also, and uh, sorry, I just got a little. So yeah, as I was talking about their partner, The Edge, um, is able to do successful samples based off looking at past matches. They're also able to drop uh, their marker and go into the crater. So you can see their team marker is sitting on the back of the robot. It looks like uh, a cutout from a glyph from last year's game. Um, so I, I do kind of question why Reckon Pinion did the double sample there instead of letting their partner um, run their full autonomous because they lost uh, 25 points there by not fully claiming the depot and by not parking. Uh, so looking over at the Red Alliance, we see that 15951, incredible thumbs, had a perfect autonomous sampling, landing, claiming, and parking. Um, if we go another three seconds later in this match, it also looks like they attempted a double sample but missed it. Uh, according to the score breakdown. So yeah, we can see right there, they jump back, uh, going over towards um, the Blue Alliance's side of the field, but uh, based off the final score, uh, they did not get that second sample. Uh, that I'd say that's quite impressive for a rookie team. Um, so yeah, with nine seconds, and then with nine seconds left in the match, so um, we're at the perfect spot, we see uh, 8680 uh, going up to score one mineral into that lander. I'm not quite sure what happened to the second mineral, but it's pretty cool to see them already starting to um, maximize that autonomous period and mineral's using that time. I wouldn't be surprised if later in the season we saw Kraken Pinion and other top teams um, going to score, maybe doing a cycle, two cycles, two and a half in the autonomous period. Um, if Kraken Pinion, for example, didn't go for that second sample, they would have had probably five, three, four, five seconds. Uh, maybe they could have done another cycle to get in. Uh, an extra 10 points out of autonomous. Just something to think about. Maybe we'll see uh, with the state championships coming up this week and then Worlds uh, shortly after. So if we uh, jump to the end of the autonomous period, we can just finish this off. So yeah, we see Kraken Pinion going to park, and then we see um, 
I keep forgetting their name, uh, the Incredible Thumbs. I keep wanting to call them supposed ones, but they also went in part. So if we pause right here before we enter Telly. Uh, something I want to note is that um, 6429 Robo, Robo Hodags uh, didn't move the entire autonomous period, which is weird for a team that's been around for about seven years. And based off looking at uh, past matches involving them, it seems like they are at least able to deploy from the lander in auto. Um, one thing I want to think about when looking at this game is that having a full auto and hanging in the end um, won't necessarily win you matches, but it will definitely lose you in a limbs for finals matches. Uh, it's crucial to deploy, park, and sample an autonomous, and you must match an endgame, at least that's my opinion. Not sure what you think about that, Shishir. Um, but it's super hard to make up those 50 points for hanging and the auto points, so consistent hanging and doing well in auto um, will keep you in the game. Uh, just kind of a personal story. My team uh, just two weeks ago lost our finals because our auto got messed up. So we weren't able to deploy during audio, uh, during auto, meaning we were are, were not able to hang in the end game. Absolutely, so just that lost us the match. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with that because I think that there's a lot of focus now as the season sort of uh, gets more and more in depth uh, on that, like uh, what's it called, on the um, on the mineral scoring, right? Every team is trying their hand at that, and. I think that it's very important for teams to not put that ahead of having that extremely consistent auto and hang, right? Because there's just no way, as you said, to make up for that if you if you if you lose it. Like if you don't get that hang, you have to score ten more minerals. Like you have to do five. That's like an insane amount of anything. You can't. You just can't make up that kind of points um, if you don't do your autonomous well. So 100% agree. That auto for anyone uh, watching or whatever, right? Like if you have. If you have like uh, if you if you're if you're really focusing on that mineral scoring, but you're but you're programming and your um, your first thirty seconds isn't up to par, you're going to be markedly worse off than if you just get those first thirty seconds working well. And I'll also say, depending on uh, how competitive your state is, how competitive your event is, uh, autonomous and endgame is probably one of the biggest deciders in uh, a. Alliance selection. I don't know if you agree with that, that Shishir. If you can't consistently do both of those, you're not going to get picked. I know that my team at uh, Super Regionals last year, we could not, I mean, we ended up, we were able to do a whole crypto box in uh, the time, but nothing more. We couldn't really park in the end. We could not do a route. We didn't even have a mechanism. But one thing we did have is a super accurate autonomous that just did uh, exactly what was expected. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why we got, definitely one of the biggest reasons we got picked. Absolutely. I, I completely agree because, yeah, you just it's it's something that scouts are very easily like in terms of not just like if, if you if we're looking separately from like actual robot scoring capability. Right. If, if there's a team that's scouting you, it's just something that's so much easier to really pinpoint um, in terms of accuracy levels, in terms of like the in terms of uh, importance levels and whatnot. And so if a team just sees that you can't do these kinds of things, it's almost impossible for them to rank you high or create that argument for your captain or whoever um, to actually pick that team. You just you I think autonomous and um uh, uh, autonomous and endgame are a baseline, I feel, especially when we get into more co comp competitive uh, environments. It's just you have to have those and um, you won't you maybe you m probably won't get picked just by having those, but you'll definitely not get picked if you don't have them. All right. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I want to continue on into this match. So going into the driver control period, we're going to see the blue line scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring into the lander and the red alliance struggling to keep up. Um, so as we can see right here, Kraken Pinion just starting to go right away. So I'm going to pause at a minute and 41 seconds in the match. So uh, right in a moment. Um, yeah, let's uh, pause right here. So I want to take a look at uh, 10 and their robot. So it's quite cool and super impressive. I'd say pretty innovative. Um, but it's not the most effective. Um, so if we continue on in this match, we'll see that they spend quite a lot of time slowly maneuvering over to the lander, picking up two minerals as they're doing right now, and then going back over to the crater. Uh, and if you, I was, I, did, I only counted from the time they started moving um, from the crater back, but in that short time, uh, Kraken Pinion did three cycles. Um, if you count all of the time it took them to collect the two minerals, and score, it's probably six, maybe seven cycles that Kraken Pinion did. So while it is pretty cool, um, it's not the most effective. So that's definitely something to think about, uh, the coolness factor of a robot or the in innovativeness versus its speed and efficiency. Um, so if we pause right here, 
uh, I want to look at, actually, if we go back to uh, a minute 41, if possible, uh, I want to look at both of the red alliance robots. So both of those red alliance robots actually look pretty similar. Um, actually, uh, I forgot the exact timestamp, but if we just continue playing again, uh, we will we'll be able to see that. They both have what appears to be a collector attached to an arm that it articulates back over the top of the robot to score into the lander. Uh, this is a very basic design that we've seen throughout this season. Uh, it's something that's really awesome, and uh, it just works, I would say, uh, especially if you can do it quickly, if you have a collector that is uh, efficient enough. Yeah, we can see right there. Actually, this is the timestamp I was looking for right here. We see two go up, and that arm is just flopping back and forth. And then for 60... Uh, God, what was their number? 64... 64.26, uh, they're doing the exact same thing, that robot in the green right there in the uh, bottom right. They're just articulating back and forth. So let's continue on and watch the rest of this match. Um, there's not a whole lot special going on, and I was actually planning on talking about this later. This this game seems to be um, kind of the same. I don't know if you agree with that, Tyler and uh, Shishir. Uh, there are some really cool things that do happen in matches, like double sampling or scoring during the autonomous period. But in the end, every game is just kind of robots going back and forth, crater to lander, crater to lander. Sorry. So one thing that uh, I want to point out on uh, with this game is that this is a great engineering challenge. It is not necessarily a great game, right? Those are two very different things with these, right? And if you're in FRC, this very much so reminds me of something like uh, like a 2015 game or something like that. A fantastic engineering challenge and really cool stuff uh, going on from that background. But from a spectator standpoint, it's pretty boring. I mean, look at 8680. Eight, they do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And it's neat for about 10 seconds, and then I, I'm just bored with it. Absolutely. I think that's a that's pretty true. And unfortunately, I feel like that's been a common theme throughout, like, FTC as a whole. Um, from, from the beginning, right, like, the challenges are more complicated, right? The challenges can, like, have difficulty factors, but it's just uh, not very interesting to watch. Like, especially, like, last year, if you weren't very interested in FTC or if you weren't invested in the season as a whole, how long would you actually sit down and watch robots taking blocks from a pit and putting them into like another place like how like genuinely how long would you be watching this like maybe i'd, I'd do it for maybe 20 seconds and be like all right uh, whatever right this doesn't really help um i don't think it helps propel like the image of like robotics as exciting and fun and cool um as much um but when you i mean if you go into it obviously it's a very intricate challenge but it's just not something that's a spectator sport and unfortunately i don't think the gdc has been able to um ha has been able to find that balance they've gotten close with the uh, challenges like velocity vortex but i unfortunately i don't feel like we're there yet and i think that has a little bit to do with the field size i mean if you look at frc and uh, I just want to first respond to Agent uh, Pira. Uh, they said that FTC games should not be primarily designed for spectator spectating. The whole point is it's an engineering challenge. I totally agree. But if you look at FRC, they have some super entertaining games. Or look at Vex games occasionally, too. True, true. Vex is the same size. Yeah, I guess Vex is the exact same yeah, size, and Vex has uh, had some very interesting games yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, you are right. They, yeah, they've, they've also had, had the... boring games, too, though, so don't get me wrong. They have. <laughs> Well, they had they had one recently. I think it was three years ago, where they had the nets and they had nets in each corner, and robots were just firing and firing and firing and firing and firing. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of love just, just watching a robot just fling balls across the field, even if it's like just five feet away. Um, yeah, no, they that's, definitely do create some that's perfect. Games. That's a perfect example of what I'm trying to what I'm talking about, right? Take nothing but net, the challenge you're talking about, and take velocity vortex, right? These are two challenges based on a very similar principle. Now, which one was more fun to watch? Which one was entertaining? Like, it was Vex, because Vex had that element of human interaction, right? That you could feed the balls. Vex had that element of you just got to get so many balls in there, and you you really had to be, like, fast. Unless you, um, like, for FTC, unless you were watching teams like 724 or 4717, Mechromancers or Redneck in um, in Houston, right? Uh, or I don't know the, the equivalent teams in Detroit, but... If you're, unless you were watching these really quick, really, really efficient teams, it was a boring game. And that's something that I think first really, really has to address with this sport. Um, I understand what you're saying, Agent Pira, but um, I just feel like I just feel like this sport could get a bigger platform 
or this game, I, I guess it's not, I don't know if it's a sport or not, like that's a different discussion, but I feel like this could get a bigger platform if it was more appealing to a more general audience. This, so this is a huge point here because, uh, yes, you're right, the engineering challenge and the students being inspired is what matters, but the thing is, guys, is you have to get the students hooked in the program in the first place, and if it's boring, uh, XYZ student who doesn't know what this is has less li- is less likely to join this program than if it's not, and that's one fold. The other fold is sponsors, guys. Believe it or not, this does run on money. We need money for things. And if you bring in XYZ corporate man or corporate woman to uh, look at providing money, the more you can get their attention to understand things, it, depending, it doesn't matter ethically how you feel that it should be this way or that way. It matters what their pocketbook says or it matters what the position of that student says uh, for things. It, 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 that's the, uh, it's the unfortunate reality of what it is, is that as a program, we have penetrated such a small amount of students still. Uh, it, it's growing more and more and more, and that's fantastic. But if we want to get bigger and do more, we have to make this entertaining, uh, and that has to happen. It can't just be, oh, you know, oh, it's about the students. It is about the students, but we have to find ways to get more students in and not just focus uh, based on that point of the, of the current student base. Yeah, no, I, I t- totally agree with you. I think that's thing to think about uh, comparing the best game, especially, uh, I think it was, was that Nothing But Net, I think that was called, um, and uh, some of the more recent FT- FTC is constantly like limiting the amount of stuff you can hold, and I get for like last year because the blocks took up uh, two quarters, two thirds of your robot, um, but every year seems to be about limiting the amount of things you have, and I, and I would say that the more things you're allowed to carry and hold and manipulate, the more exciting it can be. Just one thing to think about. I know you can't fit like 500 minerals into a, uh, in, on the field, but there is a level where like velocity vortex, there could have been 40 balls on the field and it was still, it would have been even more exciting uh, if you're just flinging, 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 and constantly just scoring. Um, and just one thing to think about. I don't know how candidly speaking FTC we want to make this, but, uh, those are just some of our opinions. Yeah. So I'm going to agree. I'm, I'm going to say this, right? Asian Pira, like, I understand what you're saying. It's it's an important thing, I think, that, like, what exactly, like, what you're trying to say, which is that this is an engineering challenge, and it should be, engi- it should it should have those elements. And totally, like, I, I agree with that last year wasn't that good, because it was an easy challenge, and it wasn't, it was boring to watch, right? Like, I get it. But I also feel like this should be, um, this should be somewhat more interesting to provide a more dynamic aspect. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.